Greetings, good people. This is part two of my session on playing in harmony. I've had to make it in bits because YouTube only allows me 15 minutes of recording at a time. Now, a scale da, 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 assumes that every octave is exactly the same. But Pythagoras said a perfect scale of notes would consist of things which are were related by a ratio of three to two. So we tune upwards in fifths. Dun, 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 and so forth. But when you do that, if you tune upwards in fifths, it doesn't quite match what would happen if you tune up in octaves. In fact, it never will. And what Pythagoras discovered was that if you tune upwards in fifths, and then bring that note down by octaves into the same octave, you can get a whole series of notes. And you can actually fill in the notes between the first and the fifth. So we get la da 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 And we can fill in these three notes by going upwards a fifth and coming back down again by an octave. And you do that sort of thing. If you go up 12 fifths, the note you come to is a B sharp. That's a C. But unfortunately, that B sharp, 12 fifths higher, doesn't tune with a C. In fact, it's a quarter of a semitone out. That's just how it is. The result is, of course, that if you adopt the harmonic series, then there is this discrepancy. It's called the Pythagorean comma. Now, if you're going to try and form scales which are harmonious because they all the frequencies relate to one another by this wonderful ratio of three to two, then you have this problem that anything other than the firsts and the fifths are not in tune. So what did people do? Well, in the medieval and the Renaissance period, what they said was, let's, we recognise that most of the notes we use are the equivalent of the white notes on the piano, C, D, E, F, G, A, B and C. The white notes on the piano, the white notes on an organ. So, if we're going to have to lose this comma in some ways, one of the things we could do is to spread it across those tones and that way we can play in different keys and still have everything more or less in tune because what we do is to spread the comma across all of the eight notes of the scale. The original proposal was you spread it across only five notes because the Greeks only had a five note scale um, and that was extended to the the full octave by the Renaissance period. The problem with that is that it doesn't work for the accidentals. It's great for the keys in which all the Renaissance composers normally uh, composed. C occasionally, F, yes, G, oh yes, 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 G major, oh yes. And that's a convenient key for singing in. So a lot of music was written for that sort of thing. 
But if you start going to keys like E major, what you discover is that the fifth is got a really nasty sound, and the third is terrible. The third note of the scale is really terrible. If you like, it's a bugle scale where the E is desperately out. But nevertheless, at Renaissance times, they mostly used mean tone temperament. Temperament is all about fiddling things so that, every, so that this Pythagorean comma is spread. If you have a little bit on each note, each interval is a bit wrong, but not much so you don't notice it. That's the sort of theory. This was carried, of course, completely through in the time of Bach. Bach famously wrote his Well-Tempered Clavier, in which he showed that you could write pieces in every one of the 12 keys, using all the 12 semitones, that's all the black notes as well as the white notes. But the price we pay for equal temperament is that the Pythagorean comma has been spread across all of the semitones equally. It is actually said that piano tuners are played, are paid to keep pianos out of tune. And that's why. Because what they literally do is they tune the fifths by ear, which they're very good at, and most trained musicians can pitch a fifth. And what they then do is to detune it and listen to the number of beats. So they know what it ought to sound like, and they know what it's sounding like, and they actually take it and make it just out by a certain number of beats per second. That means every note except A440 is out of tune. But the amount by which it's out of tune is not noticeable to most people, and it has the magnificent advantage that you can play the same tune in any key and it sounds the same. If you adopt a mean tone temperament, then if you play it in the key in which the composer wrote it, that it will be as the composer intended. If you transcribe it to a different key, then it may sound terrible. There were keys that were known as the devil's keys because they had these terrible dissonances because the fifth and the third were not in tune. And I mean seriously not in tune. Now, coming to the recorder. The recorder is built and manufactured, tuned to equal temperament and a pitch of a 440 hertz. This means that relative to the natural harmonics, the third of any key is sharp and the fifth is a little bit flat. So what you have to do is to take your recorder, and if you're playing with a whole load of recorders together, you can do this, and we try, don't we? And we try. What you say is, if you're playing the third, you want to blow it gently so that it's just a little bit flat. And because we know that the fifth is a bit flat, you want to blow the fifth a little bit stronger so that it comes out sharper and therefore accurately tuned to the harmonic. Okay, that's, if you like, the conflict between music and physics and how we make the two sit together. We actually play slightly out of tune according to the temperament but in tune according to the harmonics. That's enough for this bit. I'll have a next concluding bit, part three, really soon. <laughs>